In this video, I'm going to show you how to use YouTube's brand new, finally finished, built-in video editor. So let's just get on with it. All right then, the key thing to note before we jump into the editor is that you can't add any content. If you've missed something out, then you need to delete the video and re-upload it with the changes. What you can do in the video editor is change existing content and remove some if you need to. As for audio, it's pretty much the same thing. You can change and remove audio, but you can add music as well from the YouTube audio library. And I'm gonna show you all of this right now. All right then, let's get you into the editor first. From the YouTube studio, click on the content option down the left-hand navigation bar to list all of your videos. For the video you want to edit, mouse over it to display options and click the pencil icon to jump into the details of the video. The menu options down the left-hand side have now changed and the one you want to click on is the editor. As an alternative way of getting to the editor screen, if you are on the video watch page, as the owner of a video, you should see two buttons, one of those being edit video, which takes you to the video details page, where again, you can select the video editor. Fun bit of trivia, by the way, this used to be the only part of a new YouTube studio that was displayed in dark mode, and now none of it's in dark mode. How curious. All right, let's make this editor full screen and show you what we've got. We have the timeline first where you can click and drag and scrub through the video. Over on the right hand side, you have zoom functions to make super accurate changes on the video itself. You have some standard YouTube controls on the video if you mouse over it, such as skip forward, backwards, and video speed. In the top right-hand corner, you have three dots where you can display all of the keyboard shortcuts to help you navigate and edit quicker. And over on the left-hand side of the video editor, you have simple undo and redo functions. This is all pretty straightforward stuff that you likely have in the video editor that you use when you make your video. So let's move on to trimming and splitting a video. Let's start with something easy. We're going to trim the beginning of this video. So first click on the trim button and that will highlight the entire video in blue. I'm going to scrub the timeline to where I want to trim and zoom in so I can clearly see the sound waves to get an accurate trim. Then from the beginning of the video, click and drag to that point. With this bit now grayed out, it won't be played when we test that on the player. It just jumps past that bit. The reason I am recording right now is that I need... When you're happy with a trim, click preview to confirm the change, but do note this doesn't yet save a change. We'll do that later. For now, we're going to undo this and clear all to take us back to the beginning of the video editing process. Next up, we're going to do a split in the middle of a video and remove footage. First of all, find your split point in the timeline and click trim, then click split. This time, click and drag from the split point to create the split in the middle of the video. Everything greyed out is now cut from the video itself. The cool thing about this is that you can continue to split as much of a video as you want. The key thing to remember is that the cross at the top of these splits doesn't remove the content, it cancels the split itself. So with two splits in the middle of a video, let's trim the end of it. And again, we're going to click preview that confirms all of these actions. Now then, let's say we want to save these changes. Remember those three dots in the top right hand corner? This now allows you to save the changes as a brand new video if you wish, but most of you are likely to just save a video. Well, consider this when you do. The changes may take hours to apply, and in the meantime, the original video, unedited, will be shown to the YouTube audience. So if you are going to edit a video, try to do it before you set it to public, or if it's already public and you need to urgently change something, set it to private until the changes are applied. All right, let's move on to audio. As stated, you can't add new audio external to the YouTube editor, such as a new voiceover, but you can add music to the video via the YouTube audio library. The best thing about all of this music is that it's royalty free and you are guaranteed not to get any copyright claims or strikes from them. YouTube does have a dedicated audio library screen where you can get more information and actually download the tracks if you want to, to use in your own video editor before you upload to YouTube. So if I start a track here and then go back to the YouTube video editor, I can filter by starred tracks and quickly add it to this video. All right, folks, the music fun doesn't end just yet. Once you see the music audio track, 
in your timeline, you can press the three dots to either remove the track or check out the license info to confirm what you can actually do with a music track. Sometimes you may need to add text in your video description to credit the artist. Next to the three dots, we have the mixing levels. By default, the music will completely replace the audio like so. So if you want a mixture of both the original audio from the video and the new music track, adjust the slider as appropriate. Word of warning, each time you do this, it takes a good few seconds to process a change and it can be really tricky to get these levels just right. Hello everybody, welcome to this test video. The reason I am... Next up is the position of the music itself. You can click and drag at the edges to trim the audio track as well as clicking in the middle of a track and dragging into the appropriate place on the timeline. As far as I can tell, there is no limit to the number of audio tracks you can add to a video. So if you want to use several tracks to fit the mood and pace of a video, go for it. My general advice, however, would be to download these tracks from the audio library and edit them into a video before you upload it to YouTube, where you're going to have much more control. Let's now move on to the blur tool. You have two options here, face and custom blur. Face blur will scan the video for all of the faces in the video that it can detect, and you can choose which faces to blur on an individual basis. Once you've selected the faces you want to blur, it will add all of this to the timeline, and this does take a little while to process the first time. As with audio tracks, you can trim it if you wish, and it all works remarkably well. Next up, we have custom blur. This is where you can manually highlight an object in the video you want to blur. What's cool about this is that you can tell the editor to track the object, so when it moves, the blur effect follows it. You can also change the shape of a blur between rectangle and oval. Now, admittedly, in the editor, this can look a little janky, and it doesn't always track the object properly, especially if it goes off screen and then comes back on screen again. But here's a perfect example of one I made earlier. Okay, let's see if this is going to work. Oh, do, 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 do. That's pretty cool. Oh, come on, that's a bit harsh. Yep, yeah, that was all done exclusively through YouTube's blur tools in the video editor. Pretty impressive, right? Now then, end screens. The first thing I will say is that the editor probably isn't the best place to do this. If you go back to the video details page, there is a dedicated end screen feature, which is a little less cluttered for all of this type of stuff. Having said that, let's go back to the editor and see what we can do in there. You can add up to four end screen elements, and we'll start with adding a video. This will appear as a rectangle in the video player, which you can move around on screen. The video can be anything from YouTube, but obviously you want to promote your own content, which the editor makes easy to find for you. You can also add a subscribe button, playlist, external links if you've set them up, and more stuff. The key thing to remember is that end screens run for a maximum of 20 seconds at the end of the video. So that's the manual way of adding end screen elements, but YouTube does offer you templates, which helps a little bit to create a layout at the end of your video quicker. You can even import end screens from previous videos to make this task even quicker if you want to. End screens are important for keeping viewers watching your content, and you can really get cute with the layout and recording of your videos so that you actually reference and direct viewers to related content in those end screens. And since we've come to the end of this video editor guide, let me use those end screens. If you want to learn more about how to customize your YouTube channel, check out the video over here. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your video making day.